We have been talking here at Faith Life Church and at Faith Life Now for a few weeks about what I believe is a very important message, and that is how to get to your destiny. You know, I always say destiny is a place God has ordained for you to get to, but also have the character to occupy it for the kingdom once you get there. And so we've been saying, I didn't say it really, God said it to Abraham. He said, listen, you've got to leave your, your culture. You've got to leave your family. You've got to leave where you're at. I've got a place bigger than you can even imagine to get to, but you have to leave. And we've been saying, Drenda, that you, you have to leave to go. I mean, yes. you could talk about going. You probably know a lot of people. I know a lot of people that always have dreams, always talking about what they're going to do, but never get there. You have to one day go. And we've decided this summer we're going to go. Of course, we have a long history of traveling, mm -hmm. but we decided to take a motorcycle trip from Ohio to Colorado with some good friends and pastors here at Faith Life. We're gonna have a great time, but we have to go to see the sites that are there. And the mountains are calling. We love the mountains <laughs> and we can talk about the mountains, but there's nothing like that mountain air mm -hmm. and nothing like being there. Let's go. I know for me, Drenda and I, we are not the kind of people that relax by just sitting. Our, our concept of relaxing is not to go someplace and sit. That's, we run pretty much nonstop here at home. So we have to match that. We, we can't detox unless we're on an adventure. And so our best way to to kind of let down is to not let down, but to change gears. So my husband had a birthday and I knew he gave up a motorcycle many years ago when we started a family. And I knew he would want a motorcycle at some point. And I love riding with him. I grew up with motorcycles too, but in those years we were raising children, I didn't feel comfortable riding on motorcycles across the country. But now that our children have left home and they're all build families of their own, I said, it's time for get, to get him a motorcycle. We left Ohio with great anticipation and headed west. We followed I-70. One thing about heading to Colorado from Ohio is you just get on 70 and you can close your eyes because it's 70 all the way to Denver. But we ran into some difficulties. At one point, we ended up with a rainstorm that caused the roads to flood. We had to stop underneath a bridge. And I'm thinking under the bridge, what in the world? What were we doing? What were we thinking? Why didn't we put these motorcycles on a trailer and just trailer them out to Colorado? But you know what? Sometimes the journey and what you deal with and go through for it makes it even sweeter when you get to the prize, when you make it to the mountains. And so just trying to keep our eyes on the focal point of why we're doing this. We're a husband, we're a wife. We want to work together. We want to have fun together. We want to enjoy and experience life together. So we got to get back on the road and keep things going and knowing that the storms will pass and we'll once again see the sunshine. Well, here we are, we're in, uh, in Ohio here, uh, New Albany, where our church is at. We're heading out to Colorado. And uh, we've been talking about you have to leave to go. You know, God's plan for your life requires you to leave to go somewhere. And leave he has a familiar, destiny. right? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we're leaving the familiar today and we are heading west. And so you need to be heading somewhere. That's the point I want to make. You need to be doing something, following after God's direction for your life. And it's going to be a lot of fun. That's so right. we're going to get going. Got to move outside the normal in order to go and see what God has for us yep. to do and accomplish. There's always great things outside the familiar. <laughs> see ya. We'll keep Take you posted. Care with us. to O'Fallon for Cracker Barrel. <laughs> we are in my, uh... Missouri. I can't tell you the name of the town. We're just in Missouri. And we're O'Fallon, I think, is where we're headed to the Cracker Barrel. We did about five, 500 miles yesterday. Yeah, and... Eight hours of riding and eating. Yep, can't Something eat. like that. 
Is that about, was it? 1030 to 730. You said we were 12 miles short of going 500 miles, right? Yeah, yep, 500 miles. Yeah. It was experience. Yeah. It's going good. <laughs> yeah. Let's do this thing. When I saw the big dark clouds, I thought, uh-oh, <laughs> looks like a storm's brewing. And we're on a motorcycle, and our rain gear is in the other vehicle. There was a vehicle following us, thank God for that, or we wouldn't have had any room to put hairspray. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I knew we ate some lunch, and I knew we were trying to make it to a certain destination before we stopped, but the clouds got darker and darker, and then it began to sprinkle, and then sprinkling turned into more pelleting rain, so we stopped underneath the bridge. I know you're not supposed to stop under a bridge, but when you're on a motorcycle and you're out in the middle of nowhere, what else do you do? So we stopped there, pulled over to the side, waited a little bit, but it began to lightning and it began to thunder. It was pretty uh, ominous, really. It was a big storm going on. That's what the way those storms can be out west when you're passing through there. So what do you do when you're stuck in a storm? You just make the best of it. So we sat under the bridge and spent some time talking to you. Another uh, fun mess you got me into. No, you got me into this. We are under a random overpass near Topeka, Kansas, and a big thunderstorm is passing over. Yes. We're on a motorcycle trip from Ohio to Colorado, and we decided to stop. You can hear the thunder right there. We decided it might be best just to stop for a minute, and so we are here, and hey, this happens in life. It does. You know, you cannot take the journey because you're afraid of a few storms or you can persevere through the storm and that's what we're going to do we're going to persevere through the storms on your journey to let go and obey god and follow what he tells you to do sometimes some things go not the best that you want them to go sometimes there's a few storms but you can what are you going to do them right that's right we've been talking about and on our um, latest television shows abraham of course leaving his Father's country, his people, and his culture, his, his uh, whole journey began in Ur of the Chaldeans to Canaan, and they came to a town called Hera. Now that was right in the middle between Ur of the Chaldeans where they left and Canaan where they were headed, right in the middle. The temptation was that it's already been a long journey. The culture was very similar. Both cities, Ur of the Chaldeans and Hera, worship the moon god. They are both major trade cities. So when they came to that distance, they came to Haran, they decided to stop. It was a tough journey. And they actually, the Bible says, they settled there until Abraham's father, Terah, died. Then they went on to Canaan. Abraham then went on to uh, Canaan. Now the Bible, Drenda, says a lot about Abraham. But, nothing about but it only talks about Terah in one more sentence. And it says, when they got to Haran, they lived there, Terah died. That's all it says. Terah left Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan, and he came to Haran and they settled, and he died. He never got to Canaan. Abraham then went on to Canaan, and of course, he's all through the Bible, and he's the father of our faith. So my question I always ask people, what do you want to be told about your story? That you settled and you died? Or do you want to persevere the storms, persevere the journey, and have a story at the end of your life? That's right. The Bible says through faith and patience, you inherit the promises of God. And that requires persevering through storms and situations that don't look like you're going to make it to your destination. But if God told you to do it, if he said it, you can do it. And you know, sometimes the storms make a little bit more of an adventure. I mean, who gets to do this every day, right? Uh, that's only, the first time I've ever learn, done it. Yeah, I guess so. So the storm's passing. We're in Kansas, you know. It's, uh, you want to say, this isn't home anymore, right? And Dorothy, this is Kansas. This isn't Kansas, but this really is Kansas. And the wind was here, but now it's kind of slowing down. Storms come through. For a while there, there was a little bit of flooding going on on the roads, but we'll get back on our journey pretty soon. Yeah, we will. It's a decision, and we trust, we pray that you will decide to take the journey God has for you. Yes, there will be some turbulence, yes. but you need to decide, because when you get there, you're going to find your destiny. Yes. 
you're gonna find it's all worth it. So you persevere and don't let anyone say when your life's over, they settled, especially you. You know what's cool is that God will give you shelter in the storm. Amen. He always does. He gives you a place. He gives you provision on the way to the promised right. land, on the way where you're headed. So keep trusting the Lord. Look for his provision. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.